Pete, what a troubled time it is, you know what I mean? Right. Speaking of Donald Trump, you know, how about that guy? He's not making too many friends, is he there? No, he's not. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. In fact, if he's going to have his way, shut down Planned Parenthoods and such, I recommend to my good friend Jared, he can make a little extra money on the side, leasing out his uh, wire hanger sculptors. <laughs>
wild there. I was walking down, a group of Girl Scouts held me down and made me buy cookies at knife point. Wow. It's no joke, no joke. I went to a Chinese restaurant and my fortune cookie said run. <laughs> Lucky number 911. I, I mean, like, I do admire the entrepreneurs in town, you know, I, mean, I kind of like to, you know, get a little loopy sometimes, you know. This entrepreneur is walking around, a young buck. He goes up to me and goes, yo, man. I got the shit that killed Elvis. He <laughs> said, far out. Let's see what that's all about, you know? He whipped out a five pound bag of fried peanut butter and bananas. <laughs> and look, drugs aren't funny. They're not funny. In fact, this whole marijuana thing that's like legalizing because everybody deserves to be liberated. That's okay to do what you gotta do, but now they got celebrities endorsing their own strains of marijuana. It's true, you have a Willie Nelson strain of marijuana, you have a Tommy Chong strain of marijuana. That's a true fact. But where do you draw the line with these legalities and endorsements? Is there not a Richard Pryor cocaine that I can get my hands on? Is there not a Kurt Cobain uh, bag of heroin I can get my hands on? I mean, is there not some uh, Louis C.K. margarine? <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's not as funny, he's kind of crazy. Yeah, big shtick. A big shtick, that's right. So anyways, that set aside, I wanted to say some other things. May I bring this chair over here? I really am a big fan of the arts. I'm a big fan of Jared. And you always knew from his music and his art that he's got to grow up autistic. <laughs> <laughs> and I like celebrating the local arts. I really do. In fact, there's a lot of ribbons out there for a lot of different causes, but autism is my favorite ribbon because it comes with a little puzzle. In case you get bored celebrating, you know, trying to promote awareness, you get to play with it, you know? I like that about rhythms. I mean, what about breast cancer? That's not funny, but it's very popular. People are really obsessed with breasts. And that's a cool thing. It's a very good thing. I love breasts. Everyone probably drank from one one time or another. If you're lucky, you had one, you know, maybe this morning. <laughs> but balls. People die of ball cancer. When was the last time you saw a ball cancer ribbon? <laughs> Nobody cares. Save the balls. Save the balls. You got a nice big tennis ship chicks with pink shirts talking about breast cancer. You know what I mean? Yeah, Using sex care. to endorse <laughs> breast cancer. How weird is that? It is kind of weird. Using sex to endorse the beautiful nature of matrim of, of, of what is it? What's the word for? Mammary glands, mammalian protuberances, feeding children. It's a beautiful thing. Balls. What do they offer you? What have they done for you and you and you and growing up? You, each of one of us. What has balls done for us? What would you do with that ribbon if you could? <laughs> <laughs> Tie it on your balls? <laughs> you know? I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with ball cancer, but I'd like to meet a lot more ball cancer survivors and let them know that hell, one, they deserve a ribbon, and two, good for them. Because they they're just a bunch of nuts. <laughs> I don't know about balls, man. I'm just picking up where you left off. <laughs> Boy, these are some rough times, though, huh? What was that riot at Berkeley? These social justice warriors are destroying the city because some guy wants to talk. How fucked up is that? These fucking social justice warriors think they're so self-righteous that they do whatever they want. I would say a good portion of them are vegetarian. <laughs> Am I wrong? You think? Maybe? Uh, hippies? Liberal? And I would say a good amount of that vegetarianism comes from lack of meat. Which would lead to blood loss! Hello? Is there no connection? <laughs> fucking vegetarians. I tried eating vegetarian. I couldn't get past her screaming. <laughs> Do you ever know vegetarians taste a lot like patchouli? <laughs> when you start eating a vegetarian, you have to work away around the, the hula hoop. Uh, I was raised part PA Dutch, you know, so I've explored a vegetarian diet of a soy scrapple. Have you ever had, heard of soy scrapple? It, it, it's okay, but it, it's kind of gross when you get past the fact that it's actually the lips and the assholes of the soybean. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of things out there, a lot of facials and ointments and bukkakis that can like keep your skin really preserved and young. <laughs> but you cannot cheat the aging process. We all know that. In fact, there is a very controversial method about determining a person's actual age. Really? Really? 
Want to know about it? You guys want to know a little inside medical information? So you take the person, and you cut him in half. And as you're counting the rings around their stump, you check, you check their wallet for ID. So where are we going with this? Across the street, by the way, this is not just a comedy night for comedy night's sake. It's actually all a deliberated audition to get to open up for boys to men, new kids in the block, and pull out! Catching your mouth with bocce style. 
But fat people, let me just talk about fat people really quick. That's the one group of people. You can't talk about the Jews. You can't talk about so many different walks of life, this and that. But the one group of people, it may just maybe, but the one group of people that you can always attack are fat people. And you know why that is? They're not going to go on a fucking hunger strike. <laughs> They're not going to parade around all fucking day for equal rights. <laughs> First McDonald's they passed, and that's why they strategy strategically put them every fucking block. If you miss any Burger King's on the corner, that you're not going to have the fat people pride parade demanding. No! They get distracted one block, out of breath, and back around, and this and that, you know? <laughs> it's kind of sad, but that's a true story. So I just want to talk about fat people. I also want to talk about midgets. I don't like the term. I know it's wrong, and if I had any midget friends, I wish I fucking did. Trust me. For so many reasons. But if I had any midget friends, I would love some, to try some of these jokes. You know, when I first heard about these new PC terms like microaggression, do you know what I first thought that was? Just a very angry midget. <laughs> All right, anyways, what I'm going to do is play a song or two, and then maybe we can proceed into this. We talked about what we talked about, midgets, balls, this and that. I'd like to do a song about entrepreneurship. The song's going out to the working ladies. That's right, maybe you can relate, Ian Webster. It's not about your librarians. It's not about your beekeepers. Oh, no. It's not about your other jobs that ladies might do. About the stripper. Organic, GMO, cage free, local strippers. There are drawbacks about shopping local. And this is going to showcase the struggles that the local stripper may have in her own hometown. You can't be a stripper in your hometown. Not dance where they know your name. In your
for those that don't recognize me, it has a lot to do with the kind of music and entertainment that I provide. <laughs> no, not really. It has a lot to do with my recent anal bleaching, which my agent thought would bring up my smile. <laughs> just kidding, guys. This is a joke. It's just a joke. I'm joking. This is a joke. This is a joke. There's nothing wrong with my smile. Understand? Understand? Flintstone kids, you guys ever do those things? They lead to other cartoon characters. <laughs> what do you get when you mix ectoplasm and estrogen? Ghostbusters 2016. Girls are funny. Get over it. <laughs> now, I'm going to be honest. I've never sniffed the proverbial, as they say, coke off a hooker's ass. But I have done a bump off a porno at a video store. Is that sort of a Hollywood success story? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I work at a video store, the last remaining one on Union Boulevard. Do you guys know about it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. I may have seen you there. You were doing a lot of the she mails late. Yeah, I remember you. That's cool. Well, I, I love movies, and I thought I'd really enjoy working there, but um, they started training me on the glory hole. When you come to find, there's no glory involved in that thing. <laughs> hopelessness and shame. A lot of that. And you wouldn't stick anything through a hopelessness and shame hole, would you? <laughs> I heard about that job through uh, word of mouth. <laughs> Culturally, locally speaking, you guys ever really delve into Craigslist culture when you look up, like, personal uh, casual encounters? I love how they say, like, I'm hosting an open mic uh, comedy thing for Jared here. They say I'm hosting a glory hole at the J.C. Penny dressing room. I love that. Is there, like, a microphone and a little amp in there? And people, like, just cheering it on? I like that they're hosting. You know, is there, like, a little cheese platter out there? Because, you know, to be a good host, you want to provide for your, you know, attendees. I think that's kind of nice. Um, aside from that, yeah, movies. I tried to get a job at Redbox. I didn't fit in. <laughs> I, thought, I thought asexuals actually were just uh, Canadian fetishists. Eh? Eh? <laughs> I like wearing Teflon and I'm into spatula plagues. I'm trying to kind of delve into the pansexual world, you know. <laughs> There's all kinds of made up funny modern sexualities to supplement how boring you might be if you start looking to identify with unicorns. I was at the mall the other day and I realized these well-dressed skinny women were giving me the eye. Yeah, yeah. So I started talking to them, kind of getting fresh, trying to get their number, and the owner came out and said, you leave my mannequins alone! <laughs> and I said, sir, it's 2017. Who are you to impose a gender upon these people? Because they're mannequins. <laughs> I took a course in archaeology of Pennsylvania, and I can now determine what buildings are actually former pizza huts. <laughs> you guys happen to notice that all the places that used to be Beanie Baby stores are now vape lounges? <laughs> I'm surprised Allentown didn't dip into the vape lounge thing. I don't know if the Mayor Palafi is hip on that yet, but where do you stop with vape lounging? I want to know, because there's hookah lounges. They're cool. Cigar bars for, you know, the old and cool, you know? But, like in West Virginia or Western PA, is there a dip bar where you could just wad up a big fucking softball of skull in your gums and just, like, exchange a look with a stranger as you spit together? And, like, your spit's, like, on your part of the spittoon and it's kind of like, oh, oh, oh. oh mine's kind of minty. <laughs> Oh, you're the spearmint, you. Okay, you know. I, I don't really know. I want to talk about the last president. Personally, I was among many that was a little skeptical because of my prejudices. I didn't believe that a Hawaiian, a Hawaiian would qualify for the job. Am I wrong? You take a Hawaiian out of the element. Fucking coconuts, fucking pineapples everywhere. I thought he was going to pick fights with volcano gods. I really did. I thought he was going to sign very important legislation with pineapple juice. I really did. I like some of his fruitcake ideas, though. They really made me feel good about it in a useless, kind of irrelevant way. I signed up for uh, the wrong program, Obama... Obama Care Bear. I signed up for Obama. All medical coverage included rainbows and love. I keep my meth dealer on speed dial. 
Oh,